Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles, and I think it's about high time I gave you guys an update on covering the simulator and audio transducers. This is going to be fun. Well, as you guys already know, I have a Robo 3D right here with an E3E hot end upgrade and a bunch of other upgrades. I just got the new Ultimaker 2. This is a beast of a machine, folks. And I still have my Ultimaker V1 because it has dual extrusion. So every one of these machines has something really cool to offer. Now, the project goal, guys, was to take these butt kicker LFEs that are modified by Sim Vibe. Um, and they have a 10 to 350 hertz frequency response, 50 watt minimum, and 250 watt maximum. We want to put five of these on the Aboto Revolution simulator. The problem is the simulator doesn't really have mounts that are prefabricated to bolt these on. So I'd have to drill holes, make plates, fabricate a bunch of stuff. And I figured this would be a cool job for the 3D printer. So what we did is I got some help from my fans that actually know how to 3D model. And they went ahead and created three custom brackets that can be set up to mount all five transducers. Now, obviously, we're not going to want to use plastic brackets for the final product. But the cool thing is I can print and test fit the design and make sure everything's the way I want it before I send it off to have it milled from aluminum. Very, very cool, guys. All right, well, here I have the hardware, guys. This is an Emotiva UPA 500 five-channel amplifier, and there's three of the butt kickers. I have two already attached to the simulator, but this is the hardware kit that we're trying to get attached. Now, that is a mean amplifier, so this thing should vibrate like hell when we finally get everything done and up and running. All right, now, just to show you guys the evolution of this project here, you can see these pieces. Now, I have, I've already written on it. One says failed too small. I have one that says bad too small, and then I have a correct, a correct, and a correct. Now, the way that this all worked was actually really cool. Two of my subscribers named John and Daniel both know their way around 3D software uh, a lot better than I do. So they told me to send them some pictures. So I literally took this ruler right here and set it next to places on the frame. And you can see from these pictures that uh, literally I just took pictures with this in frame. Now, these guys were able to take the measurements from the ruler in the picture and from scanning, I actually uh, used my flatbed scanner on one of the LFEs, and I'll show you a picture on that. Um, but they were able to send me these, and this one was, was wrong. So we printed these small little templates, because you don't want to waste material, right? So we wanted to see if these lined up. So we finally found the right measurements for the bottom of the butt kicker. So the butt kicker fits right on top of that. And then this is the mounting points for the front and the rear of the frame, because you can see they're a little spaced out differently. And so after one try where it was too small, we got these ones and they fit. Well, now that they knew the perfect fitment of where it attached to the frame and where it attached to the LFE, they were able to model me brackets. All right, well, after a little bit of trial and error, these are the three completed brackets. They're all printed and test fitted. You can see this one over here is for the front. This one's for the back, so there'll be a pair of this one and this one. And then over here, we have the one that mounts directly under the front of the seat to hold the fifth audio transducer. Now, the cool thing is, through trial and error going back and forth over Skype, they were able to 3D model all of these parts, and they all bolt right onto the simulator. It's amazing. All right, guys, so here you have the completed brackets. These two were printed. This one's printed on the Ultimaker 2. This one was also printed on the Ultimaker 2, and this was printed on the Ultimaker V1. Now, this had to be printed as two parts, so this one's actually glued together, if you look closely. So it's not going to be very strong. But the nice thing is, it works great for test fitting, because you can see the butt kicker will sit right on it like that. Uh, excuse the one hole missing when I sliced the model. I didn't fix it first, but it's okay. It's a prototype, so it can be a little messed up. And then this one mounts perfectly on there. And then this guy mounts underneath and sits on the chair. So you guys get the idea. And then the other side mounts to the simulator. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mount these brackets to the simulator and put the LFEs on them so you guys can see what it looks like. Oh, I should probably also mention that I'm missing some holes there too. I didn't fix the model. I use a software called NetFab. When they send me a model, there's problems where the slicer gets a little confused over some of the ways that they model things. NetFab fixes all that for you. So once I do the final versions, I'm going to go ahead and print them again in a much higher quality and a better, stronger material. All right, here you can see I have it bolted down to the frame, and it's a very solid fit. Actually, you can see me pushing on it. It's got very little give. Those front mounts almost seem like they could stay plastic, and they'd withstand everything just fine. Here, we'll get down a little lower. You can see that. And then in the back, we have this guy, and uh, he's, he's bolted down, too, just with two bolts to the frame. But you can see it sits out a little ways away from the seat so that it's, it can resonate and, and give, get a more intensified effect. 
to the chair. And then the center one on the simulator goes across the front brace, you can see right here, and it doesn't interfere with the seat. I can pull the seat forward, push it back, no interference. It's like it's a stock part and it should fit there. And then I have the final one over here and it's not bolted to the frame yet. It's just sitting there so you can get an idea. And then I got to still print one more for the back. So we're getting there. Well guys, all that's really left to be done now is I basically need to find a place to mount this amp. It's really big. So I'm thinking I might put a piece of MDF across the front here and mount it there. But I'm also worried about the vibration from the butt kickers causing harm to the amp. So I'm also entertaining some other ideas about building a shock mount underneath um, using like bungee cords or something like that to hold it suspended to cut down on the vibration. But hey, I'm still planning. This is a work in progress. Many more videos on the way. But once I get the final bracket printed and put on the back and they're all test fitted, everything's working, I'm gonna just do a test fire with the amp at low power. That'll be the next video, hopefully. Then I'm gonna go ahead and send these designs off and see if I can find somebody who will mill them out of aluminum because we want them to be metal to transfer as much vibration as possible. Well guys, that's about it for this update. Uh, this is gonna be an ongoing project and a whole series of videos because you can imagine it takes time because you gotta design these things, you gotta 3D print them, you gotta make modifications until you get it just right. But this really shows you the strength of 3D printing right now. A lot of people are like, yeah, it's, it's just you know for printing trinkets and stuff on your desk. But sure, yeah, I mean, it's great for printing a green lantern ring, but it has practical applications. I use it for printing stuff for cable management, for hanging my headphones. You guys have seen all the little stuff that I've printed. Well, now I've demonstrated that this enables me to basically work with people that are in other states or other countries. They have the skill set I don't to design something, and I can actually print it on site fit it to the machine, make sure everything's exactly the way it needs to be, and now I don't waste unnecessary money by creating a model that may not perfectly work, send it off to have it machined, and then I get it, and then there's a fitment problem or something like that. So this is actually, in this purpose, is a lot cheaper than had I just tried to get a machine tooled up, sent it to Shapeways, and had them like mill it out of aluminum without knowing for a fact everything's gonna fit. And the other thing is, is there's more options than that. It's not just a matter of printing it in plastic and then having it milled. I could, if I wanted to, I could take one of these plastic pieces, create an inverted mold from it, just go, go get some plaster of Paris um, or sand, make the mold, and then I could pour my own molten aluminum into it too, and I could create a casted mount. Now, that might be something that I try to do because I've been watching some videos on it. It kind of fascinates me. So, hey, I may go that route. I haven't really decided yet. But the cool thing is, with some help from Daniel and John, I was able to get three brackets that fit all five mounts to the Obota Revolution with zero modification. I don't have to drill, I don't have to do anything to this thing but bolt them on. And the transducers are exactly where I want them in the optimal locations for Sim Vibe to be able to emulate brake lock up in the front, side to side sliding, and like the bump from the shifter right underneath my seat. So I am completely thrilled with how this project is going. I'm sorry it's taken so long to get moving on this. Um, but it is an intricate project and it does require a lot of time, hence why there hasn't been a video in the last couple of days. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you a nerdgasm. Leave your comments down below. This is a very fluid project. If you guys have recommendations after watching this video, leave them in the comments or come tweet them to me. This is very organic. And if you guys have really good ideas, I might use them. So guys, it's time to get to video editing because that's the phase that seems to take forever. So please let me know if you guys are enjoying these videos. It helps me. It gets me motivated. gets me pumped to keep creating them. So... I guess I'm gonna wrap it up, and until next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.